Stu thinks that I'm taking the the Libyan story lightly. You just don't care. You don't care about this president. You won't take him to task for anything that he's doing. You don't pay attention to the Arab Spring at all. Mm-hmm. You just have no. You just you have no passion on the story. Mm-hmm. That's the problem. So anyway, um, he thinks that I'm taking this lightly. Well, it's one of these weird stories where a lot of times you bring bring up a story, and I kind of feel, eh, well, it could be a big deal, but we don't know enough about it or whatever. This seems to be the one story where I continually keep bringing it up, and you kind of just like, eh. Like, I, I don't know if it's just that you're just not Excuse surprised me? at all by it. Oh, I'm not surprised I, I think at that all might by be it. it I, and then, but... I mean, Stu, this is what I lined. This is what I said happened. I know, but it's happening. Oh, but that happens to me all the time. But this is what I'm saying. is that We're talking about one of the guys who was apparently involved in this attack was uh, released from Gitmo. Another one was from uh, was in jail under Mubarak in Egypt before the Arab Spring. Then the Arab Spring happened. He was released from jail and went over and killed our, our ambassador. ambassador. Okay, listen. Listen to this paragraph. The State Department has. Who's this paragraph this from? Is, this is a new one from uh, Yahoo News. Okay. The State Department has officially removed all government personnel from the Libyan city of Benghazi, closing the consulate building and possibly ending any chance of an on-site investigation of the attack there. You, well, okay. <laughs> Ask why. Why? Exactly. Why? Although it's been three weeks since the assault that has killed Ambassador Christopher Stevens and three other embassy employees, the FBI has still not been able to visit the compound. I'm sorry. CNN did. Yeah. They, How is it we haven't had anybody over there? They don't want an investigation. Again, press. The question is why? Why was our ambassador there? Why was he alone? Why didn't he have his security personnel? Why? Why did he warn? Why did everyone say it's dangerous? It's happening. They begged. You did nothing. Why? What are you hiding in Benghazi? Why can't the FBI go investigate? Why did you say that there was an investigation going on and you can't comment on it until the investigation is completed and there is no investigation? Why? That's the question that a two-year-old asks, and yet our press will not ask, why? How's that for passion? Pretty good. <laughs> it's I mean, pretty, it's, pretty it's good. crazy. Yeah. Pretty high on the passion. I mean, I mean, it's, but it's not just this. It's Mm-mm. everything. It, it's Holder. It's Eric Holder in Fast and Furious. Why? 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 Why is this happening? It's crazy. But also, have you seen the the tape of the speech he made at Hampton University oh, back take in 2007? <laughs> I can't take the speech. Have you when seen When that it, speech though? tape finally came out last <laughs> night, I, I looked at Stu and I said, why? Why would you do that? With everything that's going on, all of these important stories, why would you release that tape? Why is that important? Libya. It's like you're working for the administration. Libya. Why? And here's the thing. You've got three weeks, gang. They're not going to do it. You are going. This is going to be erased or buried. This guy is a danger to the United States of America. He is a danger to the United States of America because there are too many things out there and nobody is asking any questions. What are we going to spend the next four years in hearings? No. Hearings won't happen. There is, there is a clear and present danger. The Muslim Brotherhood has been institutionalized under this president. What, what question? Were, what were they doing in Libya? What were we doing in Benghazi? Why won't they investigate? What is it they are avoiding? Why? Why? It is critical that you have that information. And they're not going to ask that question. They won't ask that question. Maybe they'll ask that question after the election, but then it will be too late. Yeah, it's you've said this before, but it's do you want the quote unquote Watergate investigations going on with a sitting president or a guy who just left? You know, everybody says that they're going to, you know, well, I'm just concentrating on the Senate and the House. And that's great strategy. It is. You want to make sure that we have the Senate and the House. If you don't have the president, you want to make sure you have that. Do you think this guy cares about the Senate and the House? If you have a Senate and a House that is controlled by the by the uh, the Republicans 
and they say, no, we're not going to do any of those things, what the hell do you think he's going to do? He's going to get on with his spin machine in the media, and they are going to trash the Republicans, and they're going to say, we've got to do nothing Congress, and he'll do it through executive order, Mm -hmm. and in two years, Mm -hmm. you will neither have the House or the Senate. Hello? Earth to America? I mean, it's crazy. It's, it's, It's inexplicable. Listen, how many interviews have they done with eyewitnesses to this attack? None. Zero. Not one interview. We had four representatives of our country killed in Benghazi, and they haven't even shown up on site or done one interview with an eyewitness. Somehow CNN got there, but the FBI hasn't been there? This is how long is the how long is the How long is the tape from John Stewart? How long is this? I Okay, it's about five minutes. So. Okay, well, let's go quickly. Yeah, I just want you to hear this. is He put the timeline together for this. Now, he's making fun of it. You know, they just don't communicate. No, John, you dummy. Look at what you've just put together. It is completely unbelievable. Listen to the timeline John Stewart just put together on this Benghazi uh, killing. You have it? They killed four Americans, including our ambassador to that country. Three days after the attacks, the White House was still in fact-finding mode. What I'm telling you is, this is under investigation. This is obviously under investigation. An ongoing investigation. There's a lie number one. Wait till you have all the facts straight. (laughs) Although, in the same press conference, we did establish a hunch. We have no uh, information to suggest that it was a pre-planned attack. Uh, The unrest we've seen around the region has been in reaction to uh, a video. Yeah crappy Mohammed movie that things like the ring <laughs> three days after you watch it embassies just burst into flames <laughs> so the administration's story was that one anti-muslim video on youtube happened to touch off a massive protest that happened to occur on the anniversary of september 11th and happened to spread quickly to 27 other places <laughs> seems implausible but two days after carney's press conference they had an explanation for that too Our current assessment is that what happened in Benghazi was, in fact, initially a spontaneous uh, reaction to what had just transpired hours before in Cairo, uh, almost a copycat uh, of uh, of the demonstrations against our facility in Cairo, uh, which were prompted, of course, by the video. Copycats. (laughs) So Libya wasn't the ring. It was the ring, too. So five days after the attacks, the White House was still sticking to the video story. But on the eighth day, the director of National Counterterrorism Center went in front of Congress with a slightly different assessment. I would say yes. Uh, They were killed in the course of a terrorist attack on our embassy. Of course, he's going to say that was a terrorist attack. He runs the counterterrorism center. I mean, you know, the guy (laughs) sees everything as a terror problem. It's sort of like if you ask the Ghostbusters, they blame ghosts. You know what I mean? (laughs) If If you ask the Foo Fighters, they... Probably blame it on food. <laughs> anyway, the gentleman had company in making that assessment. It is, uh, I think, self-evident that what happened in Benghazi was a terrorist attack. Oh! How bad does it suck to be the White House press secretary? Listen to this. Hey, get out there and tell him it was the video. Okay. Get out there and tell him it was a terrorist attack. Okay. <laughs> Not to mention, judging by the sound of that video, they apparently make him stand in a very special place while answering questions. <laughs> but you know what? It's not so weird. I mean, it started out, the administration wasn't quite sure what happened. They made a couple of statements, which later they wanted to take back. And by day eight, they were very clear that this was a terrorist attack. So the president's spokesman says it's a terrorist attack. Cut to the president of the United States just three hours later. I don't want to speak to something until we have all the information. What we do know is that uh, the natural uh, protests that uh, arose because of the outrage over the video uh, were used as an excuse by extremists uh, to see if they can also directly harm U.S. interests. So do you guys talk to each other or? (laughs) I mean, for God's sake, Hillary Clinton got the memo. What happened in Benghazi was a terrorist attack. Come on, Mr. President, try it again in a safer space. I heard uh, Hillary Clinton say that it was an act of terrorism. Is it? What do you say? Well, we're still doing an investigation. Uh, There's no doubt that 
the kind of weapons that were used, uh, the, the ongoing assault, uh, that it wasn't just a mob action. And? <laughs> I mean, it wasn't just a mob action, but it wasn't an act of terrorism either. What does that leave? What is it, Libyan St. Patrick's Day? What was going on? A quinceanera that got out of hand? Now, a cynic would argue that the president's been unwilling to admit our embassies were targeted by terrorists, because that will make him look bad right before an election. But hey, maybe all this back and forth has just been honest confusion. Maybe it just took a week or two for everyone to figure out what really happened in Libya. That's possible, right? Our sources tell us that law enforcement officials knew within 24 hours that this was a terror attack. <laughs> well, two things apparently have become clear. The attack on our embassy was planned and coordinated. The response to it, eh, not so much. Okay, stop. There's more. He goes on. There's more. It, it, do you see the timeline? Do you see how many hoops you have to jump, jump through? And the biggest lie is the one that nobody's questioning. Not only why, why was everybody there? What did the president know and when did he know it? But you keep saying in every single one, you don't want to comment on it until the investigation is complete. The facts are still being gathered. M Mr. President, your own sources say there's no investigation going on. We haven't talked to a single witness, not one. Why are you lying to us about that? How are you gathering facts? How's that investigation going, Mr. President? There is no investigation. Why won't you tell us what you know? Because you've got an investigation that's going on. You don't want to comment until you get all the facts. Okay, but you're not doing an investigation. Why? W well, because it's too dangerous? Because you don't want something uncovered? Why? Why aren't you doing one? Well, I can't comment on that until there's an investigation. There is, there is something very, very bad here. Very bad. Because nobody behaves this way. Let me ask you this question. What is their exit strategy? Because you have to have an exit strategy. You, you, can only, you can only hold people at bay for so long. But he's lying on multiple fronts in multiple different ways. This thing is going to come apart at some point. What is his exit strategy? How do you get out of this one? I'll tell you. A bigger crisis. That's the only way out. A bigger crisis that allows you to move forward and do the things that you have to do for the safety of the country. Warning. Very, very dangerous things are happening right now in Washington.